Um, so placemaking collaborative. This is uh, some of our core members over here at our, um, our one of our most um, interactive events where we did a pop up uh, placemaking uh, event at Dorchester Open Streets in September of last year, a couple months ago. So last year was really about like we're just kind of figuring it out where um, David and I have been co hosts for just a year and we are excited to kind of move forward and do some more hands-on events um, next year and get the collaborative really involved and maybe move past this a little bit, the virtual, I think uh, starting to, people are starting to go to more in-person events. So I think that's the hope for next year. Uh, we're always seeking out new members, especially um, from multi-disciplines and backgrounds. We really want to have people not just architects, but landscape architects, urban planners, artists, community members. So at any time, um, because we think that having that diverse group of people really um, makes the connections better and reaches people better in, in our network um, to make the event better as it is better with you guys being involved and not just David and I running the events. Sorry about that. I uh, my shortcuts aren't aren't working. There we go. Okay, great. So so yeah. So this presentation or this these slides here put together some of what we worked on last year, um, sort of categories of what we worked on. Um, and so we had a few presentations, which is which is talking about or having people that have done interesting interventions and are, are in involved in the placemaking sphere and different projects, did some presenting of their work. Uh, this is particularly good in like the winter months when uh, it's outdoor placemaking in Boston is not as, not as great to do. Um, so we got a few of these last year. Uh, the one in the sort of uh, left side of, of the page here uh, was a, a, group, a group presentation. We had three presenters talk about uh, current projects or that they've been involved in. Uh, Jonathan Evans from Mass Design Group uh, gave a presentation on the actual MLK uh, Memorial, which now is getting a lot of press since it opened um, on MLK Day last month, a couple of weeks ago. So uh, he, he presented on it when it was still in construction and talked through the, the sort of design framing of it and, and sort of the meaning behind it and, and, and how it came together. So it was quite interesting. And I haven't actually been out there yet, so I'm going to need to get out there and see it in real life now. Uh, we also had Michael Evans in that presentation, who was who's from the city of uh, Boston Mayor's Office of New Urban Mechanics, kind of fun, like a uh, group uh, within the city of Boston that tries to um, rethink about how to do things around the city and, and kind of like stimulate a lot of different parts of the city uh, with pop up events and potential uh, street sort of streetscape interventions that can be more, you know, become more permanent. Um, so just really trying to create interesting things or interesting uh, sort of projects that go around the city. Uh, he was talking about some of their winter winter pop-up placemaking, which which we like to get involved into, the city, city likes to do. Uh, and then also Crystal uh, Crystal by Wegner uh, spoke from the design studio for social intervention, which um, does really cool stuff. Like they they really are involved in, in sort of the this, this social idea of placemaking. They, they like to, uh, they pulled together folks from the community around the one she presented was in around Inman Square when they were going to redevelop the park there in Cambridge and and really like like really getting deep into the community needs and what the community wants for these for these type of projects so so very um interesting sort of like framework to think about how to do placemaking from within the community and, and get very diverse community feedback towards projects so they, they do some really interesting stuff as well. And then on the and, one on the yeah. And there's Sorry, a ahead. link uh, to the YouTube recording of this presentation that you uh, can access. So throughout this PDF, there's um, links to all of the the old um, recordings or presentations or so forth. So you can access those later. Yes, thanks Emily. And yeah. I'll just add that this was our first event. So it really set the stage for how we wanna be very interdisciplinary as well and incorporate those people into our presentations and um, collaborative. Yep. 
That's right. And so uh, then we, we did another one of these presentations uh, in um, around May of last year. And this was uh, about developing public space in downtown, which is something that's really um, kind of a hot topic, something that was sort of mentioned by uh, you know, by Mayor Wu in her speech about, about trying to sort of activate downtown more. The city's really focused on this. So uh, we had um, a group that was involved in, in several projects, but mostly um, we focused on this one on the screen there, which is the Tontine Crescent project. Uh, we had uh, we had Haley Thomas from Millennium Partners, who's the developer. And we had, actually, I think Shauna ended up having her other partner from Ground Inc. Landscape talk in that one. Uh, it was Curtis Puncher from Ground Inc. who did the landscape design, and then and then Seth Reisman works at my firm from Handel Architects, who's the architect uh, on these Millennium projects in downtown Boston. Um, and this was really a it looked a bit broadly at some of the Millennium work in downtown from the first Millennium Tower over to Winthrop, but sort of focused on this piece, which is like spans between those two projects, and it was really trying to to you know to this is really about us sort of giving, uh, taking over this extended area of street, giving it a street diet, as you like to call it, Emily. Um, it was just more asphalt than you needed there. And this was fascinating project since it, it started as a, um, it's just a temporary pop-up sort of placemaking. So it was just uh, some temporary kind of um, just concrete bollards and um, that were sort of blocking off the site and then and that really was popular. People just like sprawled out there and it became a real great pop-up uh, type of type of development in the summer. And then uh, gradually sort of morphed into becoming a permanent taking over of the street for this pedestrian plaza and uh, seating outside of the couple of restaurants on that block there. And they talked through a bit more detail on how this how this came to be over time. And now it's a, you know, a good example of, of creating public space out of what was really just expanded you know excess roadway basically in the city and there's a really great um presentation link here we actually have the whole access to the entire presentation with fantastic visuals of the history diagrams good reference for graphics um it's really cool so if you want to take a look for any precedents in the future when you're working mm -hmm. on something similar it's a it's a great example of a presentation it was really engaging mm -hmm. yeah yeah, it shows that so it sort of shows that not only the historic sort of context, but shows the sort of development of this from from thinking about what to do to the temporary pop up to the permanent one. So yeah, very interesting stuff. So then we did some in person things as we started to to figure out uh, what we wanted to do with the group. We did uh, a tour at Boston City Hall Plaza, um, which just opened up this past November. So uh, if you haven't checked it out, please, please do. It's really awesome. Fortunately, there's an eight, uh, age limit on the playground you see here, but um, you could probably sneak on <laughs> if you're interested <laughs> in one of, if you want to play. Um, but I will definitely be back. Hopefully when it's a, it's the trees definitely help. I, I don't know if any of you have walked, remember walking through and feeling like you're in a massive wind tunnel, but now there's beautiful plantings and trees. Uh, we learned about a really uh, interesting uh, way that they drain the water uh, subsurface and it's very nicely integrated and uh, very fully accessible now. Uh, whereas before it was, you know, basically made up of steps um, and plaza. And now they just kind of uh, gently slope all the pathways so that it's very accessible to all ages, um, you know, and then adding things that will really invite people of all ages, like the playground, you know, seating. Um, there aren't things that prevent homeless people from lying down. It's really, really welcoming to all, but it feels very open and safe at the same time so that people can, can walk through. And I have linked here, uh, so if you're not part of the collaborative and you want to share, you know, some of the, this is uh, photos that collaborative has access to, but I have the, it's uh, linked in here of uh, the tour. And then just a little more information if you're, if you're interested on the, the project itself through Sasaki and their design team led us through. So it was really, really cool and exclusive. So we hope to do more kind of exclusive tours, I think, in construction, I think it is really unique to be able to to tour that, especially from the perspective of the design team and what they went through. 
And then I think our, all our favorite event was the temporary pop-up and hoping to do more things like that. And uh, we built this great wood structure that we actually still have all the pieces and it breaks down nice, like a great puzzle. It's in the basement of my firm. <laughs> so we can get it at any time. And we already have great ideas on how we might use it in the future. But in this event, we used um, curtain rod poles to tie flagship tape in colors and have people write down what their joy is and hung it up and they hung it up as they went. And then it became this really cool interactive installation that kids were like running through and scootering through and uh, made for some great, <laughs> made for some great photos. Um, so there's some more pictures of the event here uh, that you can check out and videos if you wanna share those. And then um, I also made a video that I'll share in just a moment. Uh, but in addition to the art installation, we had to fill an entire block. Um, they had a lot of faith in us and we were very <laughs> surprised by the amount of space they gave us, but it was really cool. Uh, so we also had areas where people could sit, grab a snack, get some water, um, you know, hang out. Uh, there are people who were like leaning their bikes up and and uh, taking a moment of rest because the whole street was just filled with people of all um, mobility going down so they could relax for a minute. And then we had a fantastic um, obstacle course where you could jump and spin and, and dive through the finish. And uh, that was really cool to see people of all ages and full families like racing through with their, you know, three-year-old versus the, <laughs> versus the 30-year-olds. Uh, thought it was uh, very, very cute. And then we also, I forgot uh, the Zumba class we had at the end. We had a local Zumba instructor who had, um, was teaching and you could join in at any time to do some Zumba. I, I did that myself. It was, it was great. First time doing Zumba. Uh, so we're going to just watch the um, the video, but I'm going to share through a different so that I could do with sound and not have any issues. <laughs> we also had chalk art for creative artists to draw as they wanted to on the street. Work. <laughs> it did not. Um, okay, there we go. Now I got it. I uh, have to share the right one. There we go. All right. I made this awesome video. I hope you guys like it of the event. It's only two minutes. Um, so we'll uh, get a taste of what it was like to be there at our event.
and we have it. That was a little taste of the event. Um, very fun. Hope you enjoyed it. Uh, got to appreciate all the hard work that went into that because it was a lot of hard work. Um, you know, a late night building those those wood structures uh, in PCA's um, gathering meeting space. So, I um, my firm really supports me, so I appreciate that. <laughs> Um, but going back to this, so I will just say that this is hopefully happening every year, the open streets, they had three locations last year, um, and hopefully they'll do more next year. So that's that's definitely on the, the docket for, for next year. So I put uh, this slide together, you know, celebrating our, our team and also for of um, things that we've talked about and things we hope to do and, and um, this time, you know, thinking about the seasons, I think we, you know, went into placemaking not fully resonating that if we want to be more hands on, we really have to consider the weather <laughs> and, you know, when we want to do a, a bike tour and how far in advance we want to do it. So I thought this might help us uh, guide us. And then, you know, then we could figure out if we want to add more events when it makes sense um, based on how much prep, you know, event is needed for. Um, so I got some great pictures of the collaborator on the left. Unfortunately, people who are virtual, I haven't been like snapping pictures of everyone in meetings. So there are a few more people who've been helping um, virtually who weren't able to attend you know, our in-person events, but hopefully we'll get some more shots of them this year. Uh, so yeah, David, you wanna start us off because you have the first event you've been prepping for, um, for, this, uh, for this coming month. Sure. Yeah. Um, yep. Sounds good. I think we we've been uh, looking to do another kind of a presentation of current placemaking projects of, that are that are interesting. So uh, uh, that's sort of that's the one that we have slated for March second, uh, and um, we'll have more information on it soon. But a couple of um, placemakers that do that have done some cool interventions that we can have one of our one of those group presentations and those are always those always seem to be popular because people are interested in in some of the projects that that are being talked about so i have one of those coming up in yeah coming up in march yeah and i'll just so these are all hopeful not necessarily on the books but like kind of just getting an idea this one actually is in the works yeah, um, but to david's point about presentations kind of being like a really nice good event I, I think we should do more of those we can do as many of them as we want um, there's no limit to like having online presentations um, obviously if we want to add a component in person that's still not even a problem because the BSA offers their space to us at any time you know they have a couple rooms and as I say that I remember they're renovating so we'll have to coordinate <laughs> when they're doing the renovations but um, it shouldn't be a problem to add an in-person component so the next one I'm hopeful of, I just had, you know, wanted to incorporate some idea of doing winter placemaking um, because we kind of missed uh, doing a tour of the winter markets. You'll see that at the very end, but we were hoping, so I put that on for next year um, because Boston, you know, has blown up with doing awesome winter markets all throughout Seaport and South Boston and um, South End. So there's been a few that we could take advantage of in doing a tour and maybe meeting with the people who design those events um, and how they make those happen and uh, whether they're on like sites that are meant for construction later on or not but in an effort to bring that in if there's time because the winter is slowly ending um, I looked up a lot of uh, great restaurants in uh, Seaport and South Boston that are near each other that have either like an igloo or um, a greenhouse, like those miniature greenhouses on the roof uh, and different ways in which they try and engage people in the winter, whether it's like a cocktail menu with hot cocktails. Um, so my hope is to do a little restaurant tour. Um, it would be kind of a big planning event. So if anyone's interested in um, partnering with me on that, I haven't gotten started. I've picked restaurants that I'd like to go visit you know, see if the owner's interested because it would take some coordination with the schedule, but they're relatively within walking distance. Um, so yeah. And then the next one after that, I have a um, connection with Polly Carpenter who used to work at the BSA 
and um, as you know, kind of the head of events. And now she's on the board of the Cambridge Foundry, which is a new kind of maker place slash it's flexible zone where you can like, ha you know, basically rent a space and have someone give a presentation to a hundred people, or you can take like a welding workshop or a dance workshop or, um, so it's kind of a wild space. It's also a really cool uh, renovation to like a brick um, and steel building. So I think in twofold, we could either have one of our um, meetings there in person, like our, our own group, or we could do a tour and maybe meet with some of the makers who are residents there. Uh, but something I'm looking into as to, um, but Polly, Polly's offered up that space to us. So if you have another event, or idea we could they obviously have an array of spaces um, if you're interested in hosting there I could talk to Polly next one is community engagement so that is Dina and I as well um, I kind of just put that out there as maybe April being a good time in um, advance of the summer months when you're getting ready to start engagement on your projects we wanted to have a workshop where people could meet learn how they should be doing community engagement you know maybe it's above and beyond like the public meeting we're required to do for um large project review maybe we're like teaching and learning people getting crystal from design for social intervention to come teach people how they should be um, engaging and getting the right feedback before you start your project and design or um, so forth so dean and i are working on that but we haven't really gotten started so that's another one that could could use some other um, passion in it as well. I guess, yeah, okay, the, I'll um, have you do the next one. Yeah, sure. I guess the, the bike the bike tour is something we've talked about for a while. Uh, we um, Aaron from Culture House is on our um, collaborative group here, and and uh, they have an office over there in Somerville. So, but he's done these, he's organized these before. Uh, but we wanted to sort of do a place making specific bike tour. So we'd go to a few of the sites around, uh, around looking like we do, you know, Cambridge Somerville loop. And we've been talking about this for a little while, but didn't get it in on the books before last winter. <laughs> so, uh, trying to do it when the summer gets, when the weather gets better again in the spring or early summer, but yeah, it would be, it'd be getting our group together and kind of leading a tour to see some interesting place making interventions around, uh, around that area that we're looking to do so that's I think that should be fun but we need to we need to sort of get on some planning for that in advance so if folks want to are interested in that we can have a team work on that one yeah and that one we're thinking may because it's like a little bit over the raining season but like in a not too hot so it seems like a good good time for a, a bike tour And small scale for placemaking interventions. That one's just something, it doesn't need to be a presentation. It was just an idea. And I believe Juhi, you were in on it. I can't remember who else, but it was. I think Natalie also had an interest in that. Oh yeah. So maybe if you guys, after this, we we're gonna do ideas, but I don't know if you had thought about it in a while or um, you know, had an idea for an event that wasn't a presentation. haven't thought about in a while but happy to start to think about it again <laughs> personally <laughs> but That's yeah great. I was interested in that one for sure yeah Emmeline were you envisioning that one would be a presentation of like what things people have already That's done or that's just a placeholder for okay. you <laughs> to start starting with the baseline and then you can take it anywhere um, okay that's, yeah <laughs> Great. yeah exactly it's just so kind of like could be like an actual project as well for the collaborative okay. yes yeah it could be anything like I said like this is like supposed to be just a diagram like you know for example yeah. we might not be able to make some of these work based on timing and, and stuff and we'll shift things around but it gives us an idea of at least we have you know around 10 projects so we're, we're feeling good for the year to like kind of meet our meet our quota for the group to engage Boston. Great, and I, I know you have you know a, a few more to go to, but it is um it it is it's actually really good timing that that on your um, map is just in advance of some of the OpenStreets events. 
because Natalie, we could absolutely like test out a few things that could then go on to inform some of these other bigger projects. So that's a nice uh, timing uh, thing that I noticed. Yeah, that's a good idea. Yeah, that's a good idea. Yeah, I like that. Sounds good. Yeah, it kind of leads into this summer for the open, where like the cities are all about trying to do a lot of open streets events. And last year, when we when we jumped on board on the Dorchester one, that was the, the last of their open streets Boston series. That was um, sort of towards the end of September. But um, we were in touch with the city of Boston folks, and sort of they mentioned that there might be some opportunity to to do something at the open streets Newbury, which is I think it goes on for like six weeks or like six Sundays in a row or something. That's um, so yeah. There's there's a lot of area along that that we we could we could do um, some kind of place making intervention or think about something to do there. So that that could be a fun one. Yeah, and that one's actually um, supposed to be maybe more of a design project where we help the city of Boston come up with a more coherent vision for Open Streets Newberry that they can you know market and. Right now they're using leftover items from all of their events and shuttling them to every Sunday actually by the public realm directors is doing the, the shuttling of these items. And, you know, he talked about how wonderful it'd be to like, if they, we could help them like figure out how they would store it on site and like how it all stacked together and fit. It's like, it's, it seems simple, but like coming up with that for them is would be so critical to making this event successful every year and having it really be like a, a standard and could help inform how the other open streets that they did need to have like a brand, um, you know, and that you need seating along the way. And that's, I think what we tried to do at our event, you know, that we're like, you need a little bit of everything. You need food, you need seating, you need shade, you need play. And that's how you make that open street concept successful. Um, so hopefully, I, I'll look into that more. That's with Jacob um, Wessel. And to David's point, we could do all three open streets events or like <laughs> we, you know, now that we have the wood structure, we could just set up something different every time, um, depending on how much space they give us and, um, you know, do a chalk intervention like that, uh, that uh, Juhi and Vera were able to, to design and do um, or something fully different. Yeah, we could hang. Yeah, I think that's interesting. Yeah, there's, we could have a brand of of, uh, of of our frames, but we could hang different things from it or something each time. So we, we could mix it up or have, have varieties on the theme, but still have it still be fun and, and interesting and interactive. So it still would be in the same like umbrella of of just creating interesting, you know, joy, joyful moments for people. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Nikki had a fantastic idea to like dip fabric in tie dye and people could like hang it up. Um, we felt like it was like too much for us to try and figure out and coordinate before the other event, but we were like, let's <laughs> let's pocket that and maybe we'll try it again for the next event. Yeah, it could be cool. Yeah, there's a lot of possibilities yeah. there. Yeah. So uh, moving into some more engagement um, to hear from you guys what you're thinking you know this is these are all great you know these are ideas from last year we're carrying over but they really rely on everyone's passion and willingness to really dive into something so we can take some we can leave some um, but in, interested to hear like what people want to do next year or if they had an idea you can be really specific or really vague you know, if you're like, I really want to make the bike tour happen or um, whatever you want to say. So I will start with saying, I hope to do more, um, like make happen the pop-up placemaking and, and continue with open streets and find ways to, um, to continue that next year and not just do one, but do as many as we can because um, those are really fun and rewarding to give to the community in that way. I think I'll, yeah, I think I, I agree that the, the idea 
or the, the sort of uh, creating these these spaces was really great. I think I'd like to do that, but expand on it with um, within with some community feedback, or or even with um, some of the other BSA groups. Uh, if there's some that are doing something like the urban design group, but I think you know if it's if we're doing if we have a chance to do a pop up and it's something that's a community uh, that we're working with and they have a vacant site or or a field that sort of is unactivated and we can we can think about we could you know create a moment there. I think that'd be really cool to sort of uh, take what we have but also like work with a you know work within a certain community or within a certain community context. Not sure what that is yet, but I think that'd be really interesting to, you know, sort of take all of our thoughts and apply it to like a real specific kind of like group and see what we could come up with. Yeah, actually it's it's worth mentioning, um, we never came back around to this, but the group that designs playgrounds for refugee children, <laughs> um, yeah. very specific group that, they they never thought would you know really continue um because it was just supposed to be one project but they've been so successful they just do um many playgrounds for refugee children all over the world which is crazy to me but uh we talked about maybe we could develop a kit of parts um that we would test out on the streets of boston and uh do it you know in areas of need that don't really have play uh, available to them within walking distance for, you know, for kids that live in the area. And then with that test, refine it, and then it comes, you know, becomes a kit for them to use and send to these places, you know, while they're designing and creating the playground, because they say that the camps, you know, can disappear, you know, with, with a moment's notice. Um, so that could be cool. Or even if we don't work with them, we could, you know, create a kit of parts to send to areas of need, um, you know, in other places, just in Boston, that could be a great project, but that definitely takes like some, some passion, some coordination, <laughs> someone who's really, really interested in that to make that one happen. Cause that's, that's definitely some work. Anyone else just so excited to do something? Or... <laughs> yeah, I'll go. I'm, I'm actually really excited. You guys have some great uh, events um lined up natalie do you want to go i was just gonna say i'm pretty open to help with wherever hear me by the way sorry my audio is not probably not great yeah um, oh, it's fine once you get going i think you just have a little delay um from us oh, but you okay. just keep going and we'll 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 hear you out okay um I was, again, interested in the small scale place making ideas. Um, however that manifests, I'm not sure yet. And then I was just saying I can help wherever there needs to be help. I'm pretty open and um, the community engagement kind of workshop um, piqued my interest a little as well. Um, just because that's something I would be interested in learning more about myself, but um, you know, I'm pretty, be open again so but you could put me down for helping with that also um as a start <laughs> awesome i'll let uh i'll let dina know okay um sorry i was just gonna say the, the lineup is super exciting i am very excited to attend a lot of that stuff um and then I'd love to help organize or, or you know, uh, work on the, um, the small, small scale placemaking interventions and see how that can plug into some of the open streets events. Um, I think, you know, that, that whole May, August segment is always the most exciting because <laughs> Boston is comfortable and warm and, and lively and, and it's really fun to plug into that. Um, um, I'd also be really, um, curious and, and uh, would look forward to participating in the design component of the Open Streets Newbury project. Um, if that's something that you're looking for more hands on, um, I'd love to help brainstorm this larger narrative or story that they're trying to plug all of these um, smaller interventions into. I think that sounds really exciting. Um, I'm, I'd also love to sit in on that community engagement workshop. So 
count me in for attendance, but <laughs> just sharing some of the things, I, you know, I think there's things that I'd love to attend and there's things that I'd be interested to take uh, more responsibility for and it's all up here. So thank you. You're required to attend every event. <laughs> By <law>. Just kidding. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I don't know, but I'm not a big biker, but maybe I would, maybe I would attend <laughs> that. I'm kind of nervous about biking in the city. Yeah, yeah. I will just say, um, you know, one more thought I had was uh, if there are, I'm just offering up like skills, but if there are, if there's any of these events where you need help, like making connections or getting people, um, you know, getting more presenters or you're looking for projects or somebody to facilitate any of these events then just like Natalie said I'm flexible and, and happy to help participate and make those things happen so um yeah just offering that up over the course of the year with them um, when when we're getting closer to some of these events or away from them but you know need to make a move on them and feel free to reach out great love the enthusiasm <laughs> Um, yeah, okay, well, that sounds good. I mean, everything then seems fairly in line with what we're doing. And again, I think we'll just say that we encourage outside meetings. You do not need to involve everyone in every meeting. I think in general, just include David or I like kind of on your updates um, because then we know like if you want to plan a event for May, then like we should move the bike tour. You know, like we should, as we get closer, it's good to not keep events too close together if they're too alike, um, because like then we're able to spread out attendance. Um, and if you, you want to come up with your own date for the event, that's totally fine. Just I suggest looking at the calendar for the BSA uh, to make sure because like sometimes there's like everyone's thinking Wednesday of next week and it's like six events and then you have a really low attendance for your event because of the overlap of everyone wanting to attend everything which is why the recordings are actually really great and so important um but yeah so yeah keep planning on the side you know juhi and natalie feel free to like to plan the event and then say we want to do this we want to do it in this month and we have the whole thing good to go and as we get closer we'll need help but right now we're gonna just take take it away um that is totally great I guess question for you, um, Emmeline and, and David. Um, so a lot of these, like, whenever we scheduled or tentatively schedule them, will be the act when the actual event is taking place, right? When do we expect to start the planning for some of these events or the background work for some of these events? Um, or is that what you're saying, like, just take charge of and just just kind of start that whenever you see app? The stuff like the open streets Newbury, like I'm assuming there's like a call for ideas or there's something more, there's like more information for some of these projects that might be helpful um, for us to arrive at some ideas, but I don't know, just have that thought. Yeah, I think we can, we can probably plug in, like, I guess, I guess this was trying to understand who, who was kind of interested in things and, and it sounds like a lot of us might be interested in, in some of the big the big ones like that open streets newbury so we could probably keep a separate track uh and start reaching out to um you know back to jacob and the city those that's generally in august so um uh we could sort of gauge like their time frame so yeah because these things creep up on you so it's good to know like several months out in advance like if we're wanting to deploy something at that you know how to how we're planning on it in advance so yeah, yeah and some, we, somehow we managed to pull together the last open streets in like two weeks which is amazing <laughs> but i'm just wondering if this year we'll have the opportunity to spread it out a yeah. little bit <laughs> yeah exactly as long as we can use the as long as we can use the pca basement to store our stuff as, <sighs> as we build it but yeah I, I agreed yeah it's better than uh yeah it's, doing it last minute is a little chaotic so that'd be good to kind of like yeah map it out yeah and to answer your other question juhi the the planning like small scale placemaking i will like we'll try and continuously meet like every i think we've been doing like every month and a half but sometimes it flexes with like holidays or busy time but it, i'll bring it up to check in but unless you've made progress like I'm not gonna I won't schedule that meeting for you you know I'll, because it'll it'll take your ideas to make it happen so you can plan that completely on the side and in the meeting we can just say like this is the update um 
same with the bike tour, you know, they've had their own separate meetings and emails to try and coordinate, figure that out. So it's like pretty close to being a, a planned event, but you or I haven't really been involved in it and that's fine. And they're just going to say, this is the date and we'll need people to help volunteer. Um, so I think that's where like the big group comes in and then the small group kind of like leads it. Well, with specifically Open Streets Newbury, I think anything that's like a design project will continuously check in with the entire group every time we meet, like as like a kind of design collaboration. Um, Cause I think everyone generally, I wanna say would be interested in a design project throughout the year. So this one will like, try and hopefully make it happen, get it organized, bring it to the group. Um, Could be multiple sessions, could be just one, um, depending on what Jacob wants from us. And so that that I would say we would always involve the whole whole group, but everything else is like on your own, come back, report, let's schedule it and get you the volunteers you need. Um, Noah, do you have, are you interested in sharing anything you, um, you know, would you like to come back or are you interested in, in joining any of these, uh, planning events or maybe this was nothing of what you thought it would be? <laughs> <laughs> well, and it is a lot to take, a lot of information to take in. I'm certainly interested in, uh, participating in a lot of it. I don't know if I if I can make time commitments for for a lot of this yet, and I'm definitely looking around at a lot of other committees as well. Um, but uh, it all sounds very interesting. It, it was exactly more or less what I had in mind. Um, a lot of these events look like a lot of fun, and I'd be happy to, to join them. Cool, great. Well, we post. Um this, you know, our collaborative meeting on the BSA website. So you can join at any time. So we'll, we'll kind of just leave that to you and leave you off of our, you know, collaborative emails until you reach out and say you want to be on those. Not that there's really that many, to be honest. It's not like, it's not a crazy time and commitment. It's our hope is to try and meet once a month pending schedule conflicts. Um, and then, like I said, you can have as, as the least amount of interaction with the group is attending these events, or you can't even make it like a couple of people tonight, which is fine. And to actually like digging in and being involved with as many events as you want. So it's really totally up to you uh, how much involvement you'd like. Okay. Great. Um, David, do you have anything else to add? Uh, let's see. Well, it seems like we just, we didn't get our full uh, group here, but I think this this um, this summary you put together is is awesome. So I think we can we can just circulate it and, um, and keep brainstorming um, some of those ideas and see what other people have in mind. So I think we can probably you could use this PDF to send it to our core collaborative group and sort of say, here's our like, outline and you know any thoughts that you're excited about or or that you'd like to join from this. But I think this is good to give us a, a direction because last year we kind of knew what we wanted to do, but we're sort of jumping around. So I think this gives it a good framework sort of by, by the year to, to keep in mind. And uh, before we close, could you tell us a little bit more about the, the Cambridge Foundry um, event? Like what, what the basis of that is and just so, you know, helps like marinate some of these ideas and, and think about them after this meeting. Sure, definitely. Um, so that one I'm still trying to figure out because I don't fully understand the Cambridge Foundry. Like I've been to other maker um, places that have residents who, you know, are artists who basically like do their work there. So at a minimum, it could be just our group having a place to meet in a cool place and we're getting like a tour of an awesome piece of architecture. Um, anywhere from that to actually creating a tour that we put on the BSA's website where we have like a maximum of 20 people getting a tour of the architecture, but also, um, you know, introducing them as an option for the space and maybe scheduling our artists in different locations throughout the building to be like, this is what I do. And like, and uh, the part of that is, can we find artists who do things that relate to placemaking, you know, so an artist that does sculpture work 
um, where do they have art and maybe we're making a connection because then we can meet them and incorporate them into future placemaking opportunities. So that's like as, as um, most in depth it could be to like the least in depth it could be. So I gotcha. want to understand if that is even a thing with the makers. <laughs> um, I know there's teachers there who teach different things, like I said, like welding and dance and um, dance of like really wide variety of cultures too, uh, not just like typical dance classes. So I'm gonna try and figure that out and then um, see if Polly kind of still has an appetite to create an event like that to get, I think it helps also give them some more, um, like spread the word a little bit to our design community and support them since they just opened up this past year. Awesome, thank you. I think the last question I had for, I guess, I guess the people who are here, um, and then we'll just see what, what you think is the five o'clock meeting um, versus the 1 p.m. meeting. And then I believe we talked about a date, right? The 9th of February. Um, is that a feasible date for attending? Nice. Oh, sorry, that's today. I'm the 9th of March. <laughs> Yeah, for our next our next collaborative group. I could personally go either or one or five. And I'm just wondering at the group we have here whether maybe the one was is easier for people like taking their lunch break um, and attending the meeting. But um for me, I the one o'clock's better, personally. Um, I could certainly do both going forward. I just know, I know a couple of people are not here and I know at least one of them usually can't meet during her work day um, at her firm, so, but I'm flexible. Okay. Yeah, it seemed like from the, the brief survey I'd sent that five was was more popular, but uh, didn't get a lot of the folks. Yeah. So maybe we can send a follow up email and see. I can do either one. Okay, great. I can do virtual at five, only virtual pretty much. But either one, I just have to be virtual at five o'clock. Okay. Okay. Great. All right, well, dance. <laughs> how are you attending? Dance it? classes. <laughs> oh, fun. That's awesome. <laughs> my for my daughter, not for me, unfortunately. Oh, okay. Well, that's fun for her. So <laughs> <laughs> great. Well, I think we should end five minutes early. Um, so that's great. And uh, and let's meet in a month and check back in on um on what people are interested in. And, and how they've, you know, if, you know, maybe you guys are the only ones or and myself and David who will um, make some event moves and that's totally fine. And we'll engage people next month. Um, awesome. But I'll send this out. Feel free to share um, if there's other people you think would be interested or, you know, in any capacity in joining our, our group. I think that'd be great. Okay. Thank you Thank for you. putting Good. everything together. No problem. You're Thanks welcome. for for everybody's help. This past year was awesome. Okay. Bye. 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 Bye.